Hello everyone, I hope you're doing good. Since Joe Biden has won the US elections, most of the immigrants, especially those Indians in the US are really happy and all those people who wanted to immigrate to the United States are really happy because of the changes that Joe Biden has promised. So in this video for a change, we won't be talking about immigrating to Canada, but instead we'll be talking about those changes in the US immigration that Joe Biden might bring into effect very soon after becoming the president of the United States in the next month. Though he might bring in many changes, but in this video we'll be talking about top five changes that he might bring into US immigration that will make immigrants really happy. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Since November 2016, when Donald Trump won the election, it was very clear that he's going to curtail the immigration. He's going to bring in some new rules, some new laws, which will make it very difficult for immigrants who are there in US and also for those immigrants who are planning to go and uh, work in United States, very difficult. And after four years, when Joe Biden won the elections last month, then what is expected from him is that he will do necessary changes in the US immigration laws. He'll bring in some very important changes that will promote immigration instead of curtailing immigration in the United States. Democrats are always like that. They believe that immigration would strengthen their economy while Republicans are totally opposite. So in Obama's presidency, we saw a lot of pro-immigration rules, but in Trump's presidency, we saw a lot of anti-immigration rules or laws coming in. Now, when another Democrat, Joe Biden, is going to become the president, we can expect that it would boost US immigration because he's going to bring a lot of changes in the laws and the rules as well. So let's begin and talk about the first change that is being proposed by Joe Biden. Basically, when the pandemic began, everyone knows that millions of jobs were being lost and just to save the jobs for the American citizens, what Trump did, he banned immigration for rest of 2020. So he said that no H-1B visas, no H-2B visas, no J or L category visas would be issued and no new immigrants would be able to enter US for the rest of 2020 through these new visas. By that, he said that around 525,000 jobs that were instead given to the immigrants would be taken over by the Canadian citizens or the residents. Now, however, this ban was there until the end of 2020, but you never know if Trump had won the election, he would have extended this ban. So when the Biden administration takes over, they'll make sure that this ban of immigration on these kind of visas is not applicable anymore and US would start issuing visas very soon after that. All right, now let's talk about the second very important change. That's about the elimination of green card backlogs. A green card is basically the US permanent residency. The backlog for that is for 1.2 million people out of which 800,000 are Indians. So this will be a big benefit to all those people who are in the queue. It's being said that all those people, if they keep waiting in the queue and obviously more people getting added to that queue, it would take people 84 years to get the permanent residency of the United States or the green card. Yes, you heard that right, 84 years. There's one prime reason behind that. There's a cap on the number of green cards that would be issued to immigrants coming from one particular country with the job offers. Now, good news has already started floating in this matter. A bill has recently been passed in the US Senate, which says that this cap would be lifted. However, in that to become a law, there needs to be some more formalities that needs to be completed. And of course, the signature by the US president. So Donald Trump might create troubles in signing that law. Now, when Biden becomes the president, it is expected that he would definitely sign that law or the order or the bill, whatever it is called in technical terms. And the wait times for the green cards would drop down drastically. All right, the next big change is to increase the number of employment-based visas issued every year. 
So I'm going to read out some important points from JoeBiden.com. That's his website. So it says that currently the number of employment-based visas is capped at 140,000 each year without the ability to be responsive to the state of the labor market or demands from domestic employers. So there's a cap of 140,000 and this cap does not change. It, is, it remains stable every year. As President Biden will work with Congress to increase the number of visas awarded for permanent employment-based immigration. And please note the other point which is mentioned. And they will promote mechanisms to temporarily reduce the number of visas during higher times of US unemployment. And these are those times when the US unemployment is really high and it's the same across the world. We can expect the vaccine coming in next year, but until the unemployment rates get gets better, we don't expect that you know, the number of visas issued would get even more higher. However, they have said that. So maybe in the upcoming years, you can expect that they would remove this cap of 140,000. And what they'll do is that uh, they will actually make it pretty responsive if the labor needs are more. If they need more immigrants, then they would issue more visas. And if they feel that the unemployment in US is pretty high at the moment, they'll issue lesser visas. So maybe in 2021, you might see less number of visas issued. But going further, their plan is to increase immigration and increase in, uh, the employment-based visas. All right, talking about the next point, which is about rejecting the choice between employment-based immigration and the family-based immigration. So they say here that the current system is poorly designed with poor country caps that prevent applications from being approved in a timely fashion. That means that approved applicants may wait decades to be reunited with their families. So Biden says that he'll support family-based immigration by allowing any approved applicant to receive a temporary non-immigrant visa until the permanent visa is processed and by supporting legislation that treats the spouse and children of green card holders as the immediate relatives they are exempting them from caps and allowing parents to bring their minor children with them at the time they immigrate so this change is another big and important change it will bring smiles to all of those people who are waiting for their family members the family members could not immigrate because they could not get the right visas. So this will definitely help in family reunification. All right. Although there are many other points about uh, changes in the humanitarian grounds, about changes in the number of refugees that they'll take, about um, you know ending the Muslim ban, which is the ban uh, on the immigrants from 12 Muslim majority countries. But I won't talk about all of them because I know that you know most of my audience is um, you know interested to immigrate to US. Maybe they are in their home country. Maybe they are in the US and they want to get the permanent residency. So I want to talk about the last point, which is about modernizing America's immigration system. So they say here that there are approximately 1.7 million undocumented immigrants from Asia in the US and many hundreds and thousands from around the world as well. So Biden will immediately begin working with Congress to modernize the system with a priority on keeping families together by providing a roadmap to citizenship for nearly 11 million undocumented immigrants. Modernizing the system might mean that they might reduce the processing times, they might uh, reduce the cost, they might increase the staff, and they might take many other steps to ease out the roadmap to citizenship for all of those 11 million immigrants. All right, guys, so that's it. As I told you, these are just those five highlighted points that are discussed in this video. There are many other points that needs to be discussed, but I know that my audience would more or less would be interested in these five points. So I tried to highlight them in this video. So thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button. If you have any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. And yes, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, Please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.